Hey guys, this is Rob with TechGage here to give you some fresh workstation performance numbers, all of which are based on reader and viewer request. Not too long ago, we published a look at updated workstation GPU performance across a wide range of benchmarks, and the feedback received has been unlike anything we've seen before, so thank you for all of your support. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at performance in Blender, the open source 3D design tool, Redshift, a biased renderer, and Vegas, a very popular video editor. Since this video focuses on just three tests, it's not going to be that exhaustive, but all of the benchmark results here are of the utmost importance to those who use these applications for their daily work. As usual, all testing was done with the most up-to-date drivers possible, which as of the time of this video's publishing still represents current versions. To paint a better performance picture overall, both gaming and workstation graphics cards have been tested, in case performance benefits can be seen on one or the other from either AMD or Nvidia. First, let's take a look at Redshift, which dubs itself as being the world's first GPU accelerated biased renderer. That means it aims to make the best possible use of the GPU hardware on hand, and deliver production images as quickly as possible. This contrasts with unbiased renderers, which can often take a very long time to process, sometimes at the expense of minor quality improvements. At the moment, Redshift supports only CUDA cards, so by default it's slightly less interesting than the other tests here, but for those who use Redshift, the results are no less important. Fortunately, support for AMD GPUs is planned for the future. Like all good GPU accelerated renderers worth their weight in bytes, Redshift takes great advantage of multiple GPUs. Adding a second Titan XP in our test returned a dramatic speed up, and if you have really deep pockets, that's just the start of how fast things can get. Redshift supports up to 8 GPUs per session, which ought to be enough for most users. Worth noting is the fact that Quadro cards don't gain a performance advantage in Redshift. The GTX 1080 Ti falls just behind the Titan XP, about as far as we'd expect given the theoretical performance delta between them. Ultimately, the faster the Nvidia GPU, the more you're going to love life when using Redshift. Just don't forget to take memory into consideration. For some people, an 11 or 12 GB frame buffer might not be sufficient enough. On a Quadro P6000, upwards of 20 GB was used during the render, so we know that the extra memory can come in handy. Blender is a free and open source 3D design suite that really involves the community in every aspect of its design. There's lots of documentation to be had to help you make the most out of the tool, and development is very active. The upcoming 2.8 version is going to add CPU plus GPU rendering capabilities, which is one feature we're eager to test out more. There are a couple of immediate takeaways here. Like Redshift, Blender can take great advantage of multiple GPUs, delivering dramatic gains when a second card is added. AMD has a couple of interesting results here as well. For starters, the Polaris-based WX line really isn't ideal for Blender use in comparison to the competition, or even AMD's own Vega chips. The WX7100 performed pretty well overall, but Nvidia's similarly priced P4000 comes ahead. What I didn't admittedly expect is what Vega delivered. It performed better than every single other Nvidia GPU. Curious if AMD's dominance was specific to the BMW render, I decided to take the Vega 64 once again and compare it against the GTX 1080 Ti. These cards are the closest competitors in this lineup. Both are gaming focused and are priced similarly. And lo and behold, AMD still keeps ahead most often. That Coro result is not a mistake, and I cannot answer why AMD performs so much better in that one over Nvidia, but it's a very repeatable result and seems to have nothing to do with VRAM. Ultimately, Blender and AMD Radeon seem to be made for each other, as long as we're talking about Vega. Vegas is an interesting tool to test with and use, as is video encoding in general. You never really know exactly how a GPU is going to be utilized with encodes, because one encoder may utilize processors differently or more effectively than others. That being the case, it's sometimes difficult to find a great video encode test, but fortunately with Vegas, you don't need to do much to get the GPU involved. Both projects used for encoding here were captured with the OnePlus 6 at 4K60, the footage of which can be found in our OnePlus 6 written review. The first project is a 2.5 minute clip of an aircraft takeoff, where I apply both color correction and stabilization, choices that utilize a Quadro P6000 GPU about 30% overall. The second test is more grueling, adding stabilization and median effects to a 20 second night scene atop the Taipei 101 in Taiwan. That project utilizes the same GPU at about 80%. Choosing two different projects to encode with here was a smart move, because it gives us a better understanding of what to expect overall. That wouldn't really be the case if the project scaled the exact same, which is the case with most of our Blender tests. Overall, AMD continues to perform exceptionally well here, leading the pack with a trio of its GPUs. With the aircraft project, AMD outright dominates, with even the WX7100 outpacing Nvidia's top dogs. 
The green team fares a lot better in the median test, but overall AMD still comes ahead, with the Vegas 64 beating out the Titan XP by one second. As an unrelated side note, in talking to Magix, Vegas' developer, the company encouraged anyone using the software to take advantage of either its own AVC or HAVC encoders. Longtime users may still be using Sony's XAVC, which will still use the GPU to a suitable degree, but going forward, you should consider Magix's own encoders to be the de facto standard choice. And with that, we wrap up our look at the performance of three applications we've never tackled much before. An exception would be with Blender, since we have used that tool for CPU benchmarking for a little while, but now that we know it's so perfectly suited as a GPU benchmark, it will continue to be included. The same goes for Redshift, as it's the only biased renderer in our collection and happens to use the GPUs really well. In time, we'd like to explore DaVinci Resolve and Capture One performance as well, as those have been other requests to hit our comment sections. Some others are in the contemplation stages as well, but free time dictates how much can be tackled. Thank you as always for watching, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do, as there's a lot more content of this sort coming.